Let's talk about the subway versus driving problem. This has the subtitle of The Price of Anarchy, which uh, gets into something interesting. So let's say you have 10,000 people who want to commute all in the same direction, maybe from New Jersey into Manhattan, or Oakland into San Francisco, or something like that. Um, the subway takes 40 minutes to get there, regardless of the number of people. Whether the trains are empty or full, it always takes 40 minutes for the trains to get there. Driving, if no one else drives, you can get there in 20 minutes. But if lots of other people drive, that causes traffic, and then it takes you a long time to get there. So we're going to use a simple function that expresses how long it takes based on how many people or, or cars are driving. So if 10,000 people drive, you take the 10, multiply by 5 to get 50, add that to the 20, and so you get 70 minutes to, to get to the big city if 10,000 people drive. So all 10,000 people would each take 70 minutes. It's a very simple model, but let's start simple, right? So uh, like, so let's say we have 10,000 people uh, commuting each morning, and just to make life simple, let's assume no carpooling. That's pretty close to two, even when there is carpooling, the percent of carpooling is pretty low usually. Or you could say subway is like the ultimate carpooling, right? So what will happen here? Let's suppose that everyone starts driving. So we got 10,000 people or 10 people driving, uh, and so we'd take driving would take 70 minutes, and they'd see that the subway cars, maybe if there was an elevated section, were going ahead of them and only taking 40 minutes. So then a bunch of people would say, hey, I could get there faster if I took the subway. So a bunch of people would switch from driving to taking the subway. Let's say everyone switches. Then you got 10,000 people taking the subway, each taking 40 minutes. Maybe there's one person, though, who discovers, hey, since everyone else is taking the subway, I can get there in 20 minutes. So that person hops in their car and gets there in 20 minutes. And the people on the subway see that person driving by, and then they, a bunch of them say, hey, there's no traffic now. Maybe I should drive tomorrow. And so eventually enough people will decide to do one thing or the other so that the drive time takes 40 minutes and no one who's on the subway will want to switch to driving because they wouldn't get, it, get there any faster. And no one who's driving would want to switch to the subway because they wouldn't get there any faster. So what will happen is that we'll end up um, with the drive time equal to the subway time. The drive time, we could say per car equal to the subway time, or well, let's say per person. Persons and cars are basically the same, right? So subway time is always 40 minutes, so the drive time will end up being 40 minutes. And that's called, uh, so that, that means no one has an incentive to switch. At least not to save time. You could say, well, if I'm on the subway, I can read a math book or something. And you probably shouldn't read a math book while driving, but it's kind of close. Okay, so that's what probably will happen. What could happen? What could we do to make the system better? Well, if we got to plan everything, like right now it's anarchy, right? Everyone decides to do their own thing. But if we had central planning, and I'm sure there are no problems at all with central planning, we would want to minimize the total time spent by all the commuters, and that way we'd be saving some people some time, right? Um, so we want to minimize either the total time spent or the average time per person spent. Because here, everyone's going to be spending 40 minutes. What if I could find a way to uh, have the average be 38 minutes? Then I'd save, on average, two minutes per person. That's time they could spend reading math books. So uh, there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to suggest a spreadsheet, at least initially, and maybe that'll help us see what's going on and then write some math formulas, too, to back up the spreadsheet. So see if you can figure out how you could, would organize some columns 
uh, to uh, to work on different scenarios here to, to solve this problem. Okay, we're going to have a bunch of columns. So we'll have a number of drivers. Let's say that's our kind of main variable. And number of uh, subway riders. So maybe we'd start with zero drivers and 10 subway riders. And then we could try like 0 0.5. Remember that's half half a thousand. And so how many sub riders, subway riders would we have? We'd have 9.5 thousand, et cetera. Um, what would the per person drive time be? In minutes. Well, if I have no drivers, how how quickly could someone get there? If I had like one inty weensy driver, not a thousand of them, but just one, maybe a, a street cleaner car or something, not not an actual commuter, it would be twenty plus five times zero. Is that twenty five? Nope. You got to do the multiplication before you do the addition. Uh, on the next row, I'd have 20 plus 5 times 0.5. That's the per person driving time. How about the per person subway time? Again, in minutes. Well, we said let's make life easy. Just assume it's always 40 minutes no matter what, no matter how many subway riders you have. And then if I want to think about total time spent, then I'd say, well, I had 10,000 subway riders, or just 10, each of them spent 40 minutes. So that would be 400,000 uh, total minutes spent on the subway. Um, and here, if I had half a thousand drivers and each of them spent this long, that's what, 22.5 minutes. How many total minutes did they spend in their cars. That would be related to, for example, how long their engines were running and how much carbon dioxide they emitted and stuff. So let's say total time spent driving. Uh, well here, zero people each spent 20 minutes. So that's zero. On this row, half a thousand people each spent 22.5 minutes. So it'd be 0 0.5 times 22.5, whatever that is, 12.25, no, it's a little less. Okay, so think of this per person drive time as like minutes per person, and then we're multiplying by people. So just like that accounting trick before, it's not a trick, it's just accounting. Time per person times number of people gives us total time. And then we'd have total time on the subway, uh, total time on the subway. Here would be 10 times 40. Here would be 9.5 9 times 40. And then you could say, what's the total overall time people spent on commuting? Here it would be the zero plus the 400. Here it would be whatever this is plus whatever that is. And then it's kind of hard to think of total minutes spent, like total person hours or something. But if we break it down per person, say what was the average time per commuter? It would be whatever that number is divided by however many people we had, 10,000 in this case. And here we'd get 400 over 10, so we'd get 40. Not a surprise because everyone took exactly 40. But if I tried this at 0,000 drivers and 0.5,000 drivers and 1,000 driver, etc., um, up to 10, right? 
Um, and then I could see which of these options minimize total time per person. So would that solve the problem exactly, or at least good enough? Well, it would be pretty good, um, but if we just did a grid of every half a unit here, maybe the true optimum is in between units, uh, in between halves. Maybe it's at like 4.397 or something. So we could make a smaller set of, uh, a, you know, more resolution, smaller steps. Um, but we're also trying to practice turning things into pencil and paper math formulas. So this problem is on the homework, and it's not a bad idea to solve it with a spreadsheet first, but then also part of the homework is turning this into traditional math formulas. The good news is you get a polynomial. It's kind of a not super simple polynomial, but also not terribly complicated. Um, so you get a polynomial, then you take the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and solve. So that is the price of anarchy problem. We'll find out how much better we could make the system if we had central planning and we could tell how many people tell people you drive you take the subway to set the total numbers just right to minimize overall travel time